All right, so today we're gonna be watering the batteries on a Skyjack, uh, checking the water levels and filling if necessary. Uh, to access the battery compartment on a Skyjack, there's this little lever here when you close it up here. When you lift this lever, you can pull the tray out. A couple things before you get too far into this. Um, you're wearing the proper PPE to do this, so gloves, uh, OSHA recommends also an apron and a face shield to avoid acid splash from the batteries um, getting on your skin or your clothing. Uh, you really don't want this on your skin because the proper treatment for that is to rinse it under lukewarm water for 30 minutes. Uh, and even then you might still have to go get checked out at the hospital if you get any sort of burning or, or um, itching sensation on your skin. So just avoid it as much as possible. Uh, if you don't trust yourself to fill these batteries safely um, freehand with the, with the jug of water, then get a funnel and uh, make sure it's a very clean funnel. But, but if, you, if you don't trust yourself not to splash, then uh, that's what I would recommend. Um, it makes it a little harder to check because you're having to take the funnel out over and over again to, to check and make sure your levels are good. But it's still safer for you, which might still be preferable. Um, another thing to note, avoid any metal, anything conductive crossing between the poles of the battery. Um, it will melt, spark, possibly catch fire. Uh, we obviously don't want to have that. Another thing to keep in mind is that batteries, when they are charging, produce hydrogen gas. Uh, these are vented caps. The reason we have to fill these with water is because when they're charging, they release hydrogen gas, which actually reduces the amount of water that's in the battery. Um, uh, that's another reason why you don't want to overfill the batteries, because if you overfill the batteries, there's a chance for the actual water with the acid to come out of there. And what that does is it not only reduces the amount of electrolyte that's in the battery itself, but it also... Um, creates an acid spill on top of the battery, which you then have to clean uh, very thoroughly. Otherwise, you'll get build up, and what you'll have is dry battery acid on top of your battery, and that can become dust, which you can then inhale, and all sorts of nastiness follows. So uh, you do those, those safety things. Avoid metal. Avoid any sort of spark or flame uh, anywhere near this, uh, and avoid overfilling and overflowing and splashing, uh, and you should be pretty good. Uh, these batteries have a lot of dust on top, but they're otherwise fairly clean. I don't see much in the way of any sort of acid spillage on any of these, so these are in decent shape. Um, other times though, you'll, you'll come across older batteries and they might have a little bit of acid buildup around here, so you wanna be extra careful um, and, and avoid inhaling that or stirring it up. Uh, and uh, inhaling it. If that's the case, if you're working on a battery that has a lot of acid buildup on top, what you wanna do, really an ideal scenario, you'd wanna clean that acid off, but if you don't have the proper protective gear to do that, then what you wanna do is probably wear a respirator uh, and just avoid any sort of disturbance of that acid uh, when you do this. Okay, so to get to the actual filling of these batteries, what you're going to do is you're going to take these caps off. Now, before you fill a battery, um, or sorry, before you fill a battery, you should make sure that the, the batteries are fully charged. However, the manufacturer also recommends that the, you do not charge the battery if the battery water level is below the plates. Um, there are plates inside of each of these batteries, and if you charge the battery with the water level below the plates you can cause damage to the plates and reduce the life of the battery so what you're going to want to do before you even charge this you're going to want to check inside here and make sure water is above the plate so you can see a little bit here in the video it's a uh, maybe a little bit difficult to see but you can see that there's water i'm going to use my dipstick to check the water level is above the level of the plates so um, I am safe to charge this battery. Uh, you wanna check each of them and make sure that each of them have enough water to cover the plates before you charge. Uh, after you charge the battery all the way, you're gonna to wanna to let it cool down uh, before you start filling. 
Now, when you're filling the battery as well, you're gonna fill it with um, deionized, demineralized, distilled water, whatever uh, you have available. Um, some research indicates that you can use water that uh, has below 200 parts per million, uh, but that's very difficult to find in anything other than deionized or demineralized water. Most bottled water is uh, much higher than that. So um, the safest bet is just to get the right water and, and use it. If you put water in there that, that has a lot of minerals, it can uh, degrade the battery and reduce the life of uh, the batteries overall. Uh, when you're checking the water level, you want to check with a dipstick uh, that is non-metallic, uh, preferably something that won't leave debris inside the battery as well. So like don't use a wooden dipstick. It's not, it's not conductive, but it uh, will soak up the water and it swell. And then you'll have like basically a, a, a sponge of acidic water. Uh, it can actually take water out of the battery. It's not a lot of water. It's not going to make much of a difference to the battery, but now you have a, a, a dipstick that's infused with acid. So I would use something like this, which is just like a piece of plastic doctor blade material. Um, they do make plastic scales and rulers that you could use for this. Um, that'd be fine as well. Cause that also gives you gradients. I made my own gradients on this for quarter inch measurements. Um, and that serves my purposes. So another thing, another thing with these batteries, each manufacturer, each manufacturer has a different um, requirement for what the battery water level should be. Uh, this manufacturer requires that the battery water level be uh, above the plates, but below the vent. Now, the lighting's a little difficult. I'll come around to this side and hopefully the lighting will be a bit better. So I turn my flash on here so you can actually see what I'm talking about with the vent slots. Uh, so there's your vent slot right above where my scale is. You see that slot leading up towards the opening of the battery. Uh, the manufacturer wants you to have water level between the plates and the bottom of that slot. So there's about, there's about a three quarter inch to an inch gap there between the top of the plates and the bottom of the vent. So having water really anywhere in there is according to the manufacturer's specifications. I'm gonna have the water level, let's see where we're at now, just under a quarter inch. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water and uh, bring it up to maybe about a half an inch. So with some of these cells, it's a little bit deceiving how much water they'll actually take. Um, so you're going to want to check this regularly uh, during this process. You're not going to want to um, go too much at a time. You're just going to put a little trickle of water in. See, I spilled a little bit there, but thankfully I know that that's not acidic water and it's not splashback. It's just drip offs from my water, so I'm not too worried about cleaning it. I can just wipe it. Now I'll check my water level. And now I'm already at almost a half inch. So you saw how little water I put in there and how much that filled the chamber up. So you want to check this regularly and not put too much in. So remember, overfilling leads to overflowing and then you have a bunch of acid to clean up. Nobody wants that. So to review, you want to make sure you're wearing the proper PPE before you start this process. You also want to make sure that you've removed all conductive materials from your person that could have touched the top of the battery or uh, tools or anything like that that are in the area that could touch the tops of the battery uh, to prevent arcs and, and fires. You want to verify that your nearest shower, eye wash station or sink is in good working order and that you have an unobstructed path to it. You want to make sure there's no open flames or sources of ignition anywhere near the batteries to avoid igniting the hydrogen gas. And you want to make sure you clean up all spills immediately with uh, the proper equipment and dispose of it properly to avoid spreading the acid to other equipment or to other people or to yourself. Now to review the actual procedure, you want to make sure that if the batteries are not fully charged, you check the water level and make sure it is above the plate 
plates before placing it on charge. You want to charge the batteries fully to and allow them to cool down before you continue with the rest of the procedures. Then you want to check to make sure the water level is above the plates according to the manufacturer's recommendations uh, using a non-conductive dipstick or scale. And then if needed, you top up with deionized water, demineralized water, or distilled water using a funnel or whatever will help you not to splash um, and have acid on the outside of the batteries or on your skin. And then when it's all done, you make sure the batteries are fully sealed again and that the battery compartment on the machine is latched shut.